got that drink, I got that drink, that purple drink, that purple drink, I got that drink, I got that drink. That Hip hop artist Frasier Boy raps about a syrupy combination made with the drugs codeine and promethazine, ingredients commonly used in prescription cough syrup. But instead of taking a spoonful for a bad cough, the producer of this YouTube video demonstrates its typical street use, mixing the substance with Sprite and Jolly Rancher candies for taste and color, creating a powerful opiate-laced beverage. The concoction, commonly known as Purple Drink, was popularized in the 1990s in Houston by a music producer named DJ Screw, who ultimately died from an overdose on the drug in 2000. Other artists, like 3-6 Mafia and Lil Wayne, gave the drink added notoriety, and as the drugs use spiked throughout the South, Houston became known as the City of Syrup. There's lean, there's syrup, there's player potion, there's purple stuff. Dr. Ron Peters is familiar with all the street names. He is an associate professor at the University of Texas School of Public Health in Houston. It's considered by a lot of people as being normal. If you see somebody smoking crack, what's wrong with this guy? If you see someone with a cup of bar, a cup of lean, that's a player doing his thing. This is Houston's Fifth Ward, an embattled, crime-riddled neighborhood in the northeast section of America's fourth largest city. It's where Johnny Jolly grew up. Johnny Jolly with the block. Jolly attended Texas A&M and emerged as one of the Big 12's top defensive linemen. He was chosen in the sixth round of the 2006 NFL Draft by Green Bay, and he quickly developed into a strong and consistent presence, starting all 16 games each of the past two seasons. But the Packers reportedly always harbored concerns about Jolly's ties to the Fifth Ward, and those concerns were validated two years ago. At 1.10 on the morning of July 8, 2008, a car driven by Jolly was pulled over by police outside Mr. A's. This North Houston nightclub, they say, is notorious for weapons and narcotics. There were three people in the car with Jolly. One passenger was arrested for gun possession, another for having marijuana. Police also found a Dr. Pepper bottle and a styrofoam cup filled with liquid and ice in the center console. They reported a strong odor of codeine coming from the cup, and Jolly was arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance, a second-degree felony. Jolly pleaded not guilty, and his case has been winding its way through the courts for two years now, with a jury trial looming. His future with the Packers is uncertain, but Jolly's case and another involving former NBA player Sean Williams shine a light on the unusual drug that experts and law enforcement officials say has developed a widespread following throughout the South. Johnny Jolly was arrested in the Fifth Ward area, Houston, where the drug is very popular. Houston police officer John Kowal is a narcotics investigator. It's what we call the Fifth Ward area of Houston. In Johnny Jolly's case, prosecutors say they have evidence he was seen in Harris County, Texas, between 2006 and May 2008, smoking marijuana and consuming liquid codeine. The high is not a euphoric a high where you would think you'd be bouncing off the walls or anything like that. It's more of a mellow, hey, I'm going to take the edge off type high. I'm going to lay back. I'm going to kick back. I'm just going to sip some syrup and everything's going to be right with the world. Authorities say a pint of codeine promethazine has a street value of between $675 and $800, a dramatic markup from the 10 to $20 a pharmacist would pay for a pint wholesale. But users and dealers also obtain the syrup through fake prescriptions and shady doctors, making it readily accessible. From what I understand from interviews of people we arrest, it's even a harder drug to break the addiction than like cocaine, marijuana, or heroin. Codeine is on the NFL's list of banned drugs of abuse. The league told outside the lines it was aware of Jolly's case, but that it didn't believe the abuse of codeine promethazine was an issue in the NFL. In 2006, then Charger safety Terrence Keel, a teammate of Jolly's at Texas A&M, was arrested during practice on charges of possession with intent to sell prescription cough syrup. 
Court records show Keel was suspected of sending a parcel which contained 15 bottles of promethazine with codeine to his home state of Texas. Keel died in a single car crash in 2008, and the toxicology report showed his blood alcohol level at nearly three times the legal limit. Former NBA player Sean Williams was arrested January 15th on charges that he conspired to sell codeine-based syrup. Williams, who played at University of Memphis, was arrested as part of an extensive Memphis police investigation dubbed Operation Lockdown. At an April plea hearing, a prosecutor described Williams as being best friends with the main drug dealer accused in Operation Lockdown. Williams told the court he obtained codeine syrup for a cousin, three times four, I think. He denied using the substance himself, only admitting his use of marijuana. Williams received no jail time and was placed on probation. He did not respond to requests for comment for this story. The NBA bans codeine without a legitimate prescription, and a spokesman says the league has a strong random testing program. The spokesman declined further comment on the Williams case and whether syrup was on the league's radar. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jolly is awaiting trial. At a recent hearing, the judge in Jolly's case tightened his bond restrictions, apparently concerned the lineman had violated conditions of his release by drinking alcohol. After the hearing, 